Space is a very scary place when you think about it. And not just because it's an empty, lifeless void of frozen darkness that will flash mummify the corpse of anyone directly exposed to it. I mean, I live near London, that's just part of the course. No, it's scary because of how little of it we've actually seen or understand. It's crazy to think that we've known Neptune exists for less than 200 years, and up until that point in human history, we had no clue about the giant ball of ice 17 times bigger than the Earth that had been floating up there for billions of years. Truthfully, we assume the ranks of our solar system are an exclusive list, set in stone or unchanging, when in reality we don't really have a scientific definition of what a planet is. The word just means wanderer, and as such, what does and doesn't make the VIP list is highly subjective. We're all familiar with the current roster. Mercury, Venus, Earth, backup Earth, cloudy with a chance of death storms, Beyonce, Diet Saturn, it's just blue, and blue too, electric blue galoo. But even recently, this seemingly fixed list has undergone change, most notably when the spacefaring short king, Pluto, got kicked out in 2006, even though it totally still is a planet. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. We can settle this like adults. This is Compost Mentis, and today we're looking at all the former planets that were cut from our solar system, a cosmic reject club with members such as Planet Lucifer, Planet Smiley, and Carla. We'll start with the most widely accepted of the planetary pretenders, many of which were taught for decades as part of astronomy courses before their reclassification. The first was Ceres. On New Year's Day 1801, Giuseppe Piazzi found a new planet between Mars and Jupiter. Next to Pluto, she is the most well-known of the minor planets, and up until 2006, when NASA decided size truly does matter, you'd still occasionally see Ceres pop up in solar system models between Mars and Jupiter as the unofficial extra planet. For over 50 years, she was taught in astronomy classes and listed in books as a planet proper, but is now considered to be a dwarf planet instead. Ceres wasn't the only one either. The next year, Pallas was discovered not too far from Ceres herself, and it was at this point that a man named William Herschel got involved. He was a hugely influential astronomer, famed for discovering Uranus not long before. The planet was even known as Herschel for a while in his honour, and you'll see his name pop up a lot more later. Herschel thought that whilst one protoplanet was fine, two was absolutely ridiculous, and so began calling Pallas an asteroid, meaning star-like. But evidently nobody took notice of this, because Juno and Vesta were found in the next five years at almost the exact same place. These four would then be added to the existing eight, and the twelve planets became the standard for a while. But we aren't done yet, as Austria, Hebe and Iris would all be found in the 1840s and would briefly make the cut as planets too. By 1850, the annual of scientific discovery would codify the planet count at 18, with the addition of Flora, Metis and Hygieia. Oh, and uh, also one called Neptune, or, or something? I, I don't know. Upon realising that this meant a majority of planets were all bunched up next to each other between Mars and Jupiter, astronomers decided to revisit Herschel's suggestion of asteroid and reclassified the ten as part of the asteroid belt, except Ceres, who still gets minor planet privileges. Um, Editor Compass here. I completely forgot to mention another five of these asteroids slash minor planets, none of whom received as much wider recognition as the others, but were still occasionally making the list. So add Egeria, Eunomia, Irene, Parthenope and Victoria to the count. The next lot of former planets were discovered and unceremoniously booted from the list between the 16th and 17th centuries, but we'll cover them now because they all form the same frustrating pattern that whenever a new proper planet was found, the first couple of moons to be discovered along with it would also be mistaken as such. The first two gas giants each had four mistaken moons. Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto were all plus ones following Jupiter's inclusion, and once Saturn got in, Titan, Iapetus, Rhea and Tethys were all added. Titan being the only one of particular interest because it's actually bigger than Mercury, but still a moon it is. William Herschel pops up again, because after finding Uranus, he also went on to find both Oberon and Titania, two moons that similarly were briefly classified as planets in their own right. They are also unique for not being named after a mythological figure, and are instead taken from Shakespeare at Herschel's son's suggestion. And that's not mentioning our own moon, 
which was actually considered a planet up until... Oh my god. 1542. Thank you, Copernicus, who also shot down the sun's inclusion. But somehow, they still aren't the weirdest inclusions on this list, because some planets managed to get counted twice. Going all the way back to the BCs, both Mercury and Venus were believed to be several planets each. For example, Greek astronomers had noticed Mercury appearing in the daytime, but hadn't realised it was the same celestial body they were observing at night, so they called this aspect of Mercury Apollo. With Venus, the confusion arose because it was bright enough to be seen whenever the sun wasn't around, which meant that sometimes you could see it before the sun rose, and other times after sunset. So the morning star and the evening star, neither of which were actual stars, became separate entities. To the Greeks, they were Phosphorus and Hesperus, but the Romans had the infinitely cooler names Lucifer and Vespa. So yes, Planet Lucifer was a real thing. Sci-fi writers and death metal fans rejoice. Well, at least it was until it got combined and named Venus. So not every former planet could be explained so easily. In 1977, astronomers found Chiron hanging out between Saturn and Uranus. Initially called a planet, then an asteroid, then a comet, then a, a what the hell even are you, because it behaved a little bit like all of them, uh, but also completely unlike anything else. Chiron proved to be a headache to astronomers for three years, until they decided to just make it its own thing. And that's how he got centaurs, sort of planet-comet fusion things. Space centaurs aside, some more headaches for astronomers were discovered with Charon in 1978, a moon of Pluto, as well as the Flying Dutchman, officially named Sedna, in 2003, and Eris in 2005, both now considered dwarf planets. It was their discovery that actually led to the decision to call the planet list in the first place, with Pluto being struck down in the process. That leaves only two left on our solar system's blacklist, who we've saved for last but were initially discovered in the 90s. They are 15760 Albion and 181708 1993 FW. Yeah, just rolls off the tongue. But the respective names initially given to them by the astronomers that found them are a thousand times better. Albion had the adorable name Smiley, and FW was nicknamed Carla. Frankly, I think it's criminal they aren't still called that. They were both found beyond Neptune, and we've actually gone full circle again to Ceres and Pallas, because after Carla, more got discovered, and some astronomers got suspicious, and yep, it's just another asteroid belt, but this time, the Kuiper Belt. So Smiley and Carla were reclassified as their own type of trans-Neptunian object, a Cubano. Yeah, I thought that was really random too, but in a delightful twist of fate, it's actually just Planet Smiley managing to sneak in a stupid name even after it got reclassified as Albion, since its provisional name was QB1. So when Carla and the other Kuiper Belt objects were discovered, people just began calling them QB1Os, and somehow that name managed to stick. So it's true that whilst planets come and go, Dumb names truly are forever. As always, thank you for watching. This video marks our first with a complete setup, and hopefully that means higher quality uploads with a more consistent bi-monthly schedule. Your patience and your support is greatly appreciated, and we cannot wait to get the ball rolling in 2025. Until next time, this has been Compass Mentis. Our whole universe was in a hot, dense state until 14 billion years ago, the Big Bang happened! Wait, what? The Earth began to cool, the autotrophs began to drool, Neanderthals developed tools, we built a wall! We built the pyramids. Math, science, history, unravelling the mysteries that all started with a Big Bang. <laughs> oh, it gets worse every single week.